support. And I have some sandpaper, you know, the good stuff. And uh, so I wonder what that means we're gonna be doing today. So I just took the car out for a 60 mile drive. I actually went down to see Greg, uh, my bodywork guy. And uh, it's about a 45 minute drive one way and a 45 minute drive the other way. And everything seemed to work perfectly and it's running flawlessly. And as I'm sitting there, you know, doing this right now, I'm like, you know, I don't know if I ever discussed what actually happened with the dead pedal situation. And so, it ends up being real trivial and kind of silly, but at the same time, years of conditioning of driving, you know, manufactured cars and how they work and how they start and all this stuff uh, doesn't apply to this car. And of course, there's no manual that tells you this. You just figure it out on your own. So let me kind of explain that and tell you what's going on. So here we are in a manufactured car and you can see that the gas pedal, my leg is actually going off to the right. And then if I press on the brake pedal, it's kind of straight or maybe like one or two degrees to the left. And then, you know, my left foot has all this space over here. No problem. So now we come to the 33 and my right leg is tweaked way to the left, even more so than I would on a brake of a normal car just to get to the gas pedal. And now to get to the brake pedal, my foot is, I don't know, 20, 30 degrees over. And you got to remember that this car doesn't have powered brakes and we have a high powered engine and a very light car. So stopping this car is very difficult. So I can't actually drive this because that actually physically hurts me. I have to use two feet and you can see that my left foot is almost pretty much straight, maybe a one degree angle. And my right foot is pretty much going on, you know, six degree angle just to get to the gas pedal. So for me, this car is a two footer and I've actually tried to stop this car with my right foot and I can't physically put the right force on the pedal to do it. Uh, and you know, that could be my physical limitations or whatever. I'm not sure, but, and I hate driving two footed, but with this car, it's the only way I could get it to stop the car. So that being said, here's where, you know, 40 years of driving, uh, manufactured cars and all their stipulations so the first thing is with you know all your nice manufactured cars like that you're using push button and you have to hit the push button uh, you have to have your foot on the brake and then you hit the push button so of course what I'm doing is I'm hitting the brake and I'm starting this car because that's what I've been programmed to do for the last 15 years um, so I notice uh, that footage that I showed you where you see me, you know, doing this on the, on the uh, gas pedal, nothing's working. Well, my foot's on the brake. And I'm finding out after the fact that when your foot's on the brake, it's sending a signal over to the computer to say, no gas worko, does not work. And so if I take my foot off the gas, all of a sudden it comes to life. Now, it's not as simple and trivial as that. So years of driving clutch back in the day, of course, you're always slowly pulling off the clutch as you push with the right. Now, like I said, I'm not a two foot driver in the sense of one foot on the brake. Anyways, here I am going and starting to drive this like a clutch and slowly giving it gas while pulling this off. Well, that meant that the five volts is still triggered and it's triggering the computer for it to not work. The next part of it is once you pull this off and you've already applied gas, this is not going to reset until it hits full zero. So what would happen is I'd be at a stoplight, make it a left turn, slowly pull away, no gas, no gas, no gas, and I'm doing this, and then I'd hit zero and hit it again, and I'd just freaking spin out with the car and l almost lose control. And so it was just this whole weird muscle memory kind of thing. But once I figured out I'm at a stoplight, fully off and go, haven't had any issues, and I've tested that. Everything's been phenomenal. So totally kind of stupid trivial thing and yet years of programming and no manual that tells you any of this stuff you have to actually talk to tech support to know that that's even happening so bizarre but i'm stating my case here so i got the sandpaper i bought the really good stuff um 
basically at this point, you know, I'm going to be trimming a few things, but basically sanding this whole car. And also I'm going to be looking into putting those supports in. So if I could get those supports in and get this thing to conform to the trunk correctly, uh, to the, to the body of the car, then, you know, we're going to be good. So I'm not sure how far I'm going to get into that, but we're going to at least investigate it and see what we could do. Alright, so I've had a pretty productive morning. One thing you can see is that looks fine, and then over here, this comes up like, I don't know, almost a quarter inch. And it's not the trunk. The trunk's actually not dipping down. It's actually the body. So once I pin this down, it looks perfect, and it's causing a problem with my trunk lifting up. Now, it wasn't causing that problem before because I had a little bit bigger gap but I decided to shift the whole trunk just just millimeter forward and uh, so that's kind of causing an issue but let me see here if I push that down then it opens up fine so now I'm putting in shims if you will to get this thing to curve correctly to the body and for the most part, it's looking pretty good. And then of course this is going to be pushed in a little bit. But, I mean there's nuances, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So I'm going to try to get that maybe a little bit better. And then that's when you're supposed to put in those brackets. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not too thrilled about doing this. <laughs> outside my pay grade <laughs> but uh, if I don't tackle it it ain't gonna get done so that's kind of where I'm at but uh, I need to put some more shims in there 
And then I tested out my sander just to see how the orbital is doing with the uh, really nice sandpaper and really does an easy, nice, fast job. Um, so that's cool. So I think when I go to sand the car, it's definitely going to take a while, but uh, it's not going to be too bad. You know, make them look like these fenders look like. And I'm using a, uh, oh, I don't know. This is probably actually a, a King fitted sheet. And it just grips right on top of the car and keeps it dust free. So I don't have fiberglass inside the car. So that's working out pretty well. So I think that's all I'm going to do for right this second. And then uh, tomorrow, you know, get some more... Uh, more nerves up and uh, get in here and kind of finalize this thing a little bit more. But uh, good day all in all.